Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make these little guys. Alright, so this is what I made last time. We have an ultra bright LED with a connector. And then this here I just duct taped to the roof, but the problem is is that the adhesion wears off over time, so I had to that's why I cut these hand holes in there so I can get my whole hand in there and actually put them in there permanently with like some hot glue or something. First up we're going to cut this link. So this is um, 2835 LED strip, uh, 12 volt, that means uh, 12 volt um, it is one color which means it only has two connections so it can only be white. Um, you could do these in different colors, I'm just using what I have on hand which is bright white. Uh, yellowish white would probably be nicer color temperature, this is quite a high color temperature so it's very white. Um, but like I said I'm just using what I have on hand. Um, and I'm just going to be making what I've already made. So I'm making three more, uh, two more of these. So you just measure out what you want. Then you cut the LED strip. So these are really cool. These are basically clips. We just clip into the strip. Now, if I can figure out how to open them. You don't technically need to solder these. Uh, I will be soldering them, but you don't have to. And the main reason why I soldered them is just because you can see that the contacts are slightly off. And then also, um, it just gives a bit more strength if you solder. You can see that it doesn't quite fit down because of that resistor right there. And that won't fit either. Same reason. That's fine. So we're ready to go. Let me turn my soldering station on. Um, so I'm using a soldering station. You don't have to, but it does make it easier with filming. Um, but also just, you know, soldering station makes everything easier. Uh, I've got my portable soldering station. Again, you don't need a fancy soldering station. My first soldering iron was 20 bucks, and it lasted me about 20 years. So I only got this fairly recently. It is really nice if you already have the Ryobi OnePlus system. But um, yeah, just use whatever solderings iron you can get your hands on. If you're going to be doing a lot of soldering or doing quite expensive work, then I would recommend getting a good one. Um, the difficulty in soldering went from 80 to 20 with the soldering machine, so it does make a big difference. I haven't tried filming and soldering before, so this will be interesting. So the first thing to do is make sure my wick is clean. Luckily I've got the sponge for that. And we want to tin the wick. And then, honestly, how this should work is it should just drop in I'm not the best soldier. Cool. Before I disconnect this, I'm just going to connect the power supply to it. Because I don't want to have to set up my soldering station again if it's not working. So. Perfect. Alright, so let's have a look at what kind of components we're going to do um, now we've done the actual LED part. So I'm going to be using uh, three... Um, male ends and then they're going to join it to a single um, female end and then the reason I want to do that is because I basically want to be able to control all three of these through one controller and so the easiest way is to re rejoin them but I also don't want to hardwire them so that's why I'm trying to keep them separately to make it easier to plug and unplug them when it comes time to pack them up and putting them away I don't have to keep them all together all tied up uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing here well, let's make a daisy chain so this is cable that I wired last year, it's fine, we're going to use that to start with, um, and then I'm going to 
make this connector go into one of them and then we're going to make another one that goes into another pumpkin. And then this is going to be like that. Look at that. It makes it so easy when you have the right tools, honestly. Um, and then that isn't the same length. I'll just clip it. And then... I hope this is coming through. It's probably not. <sighs> Alright, so we've got two wires. Um, we are now going to join these together. So red to red, pretty simple. Um, and then back to black. Cool. So now we have something that can go into a plug and then we'll go another plug coming off, off, off it. So that is positive to minus, so it's living there, minus to living there. Yep, you literally did see that coming up, come and done. Positive. To minus. One of the nice things about these screw connectors is it's really easy to reuse them for other projects. Um, what I'm doing here is kind of expensive because I'm using multiple pairs of male-female connectors. Um, but just in terms of the convenience, it makes it worth it. There are cheaper ways of doing it if you just connect everything together. Alright, so I have finished making my um, 1 to 3 cable. And we're going to plug in each one of these. And that should allow us to chain all these pumpkins together with the lights intact with using one power supply and one control unit. So that one isn't working. Cool. Well, it's easy to figure out. Why is it not working? One of the things about all this kind of stuff is it's really easy to just troubleshoot if the problem is here, here, or here. Obviously it's here. And given just how this is looking, see how much copper is sticking out? Yeah, that's the problem. So we will just open that up. And I might have to solder this, but we'll see. Try that again. One, two, three. So the other thing I want to do is I'm going to glue gun these at the end here. That's just going to stop that from slipping out from rough handling. All right, so I have everything glued up. Uh, the last thing I do before I glue these lights in is I'm just going to double check that everything works um, because fixing it after this point would be a pain. So that one worked a bit better. Let's see if I can show you. So I put glue directly on that part, and then the rest I just used the adhesive strip that was already attached to the LED light. So I think that's the winning number. And we want to plug some of these in. So, the first one. This one here. Oh, how cool does that look? Oh man, 
I'm so excited with that. All right, cool. So now I've got that running. I'll show you a couple of other things you can do once you've done that. Um, so this here, this is a um, PIR sensor. Uh, it detects movement. So we plug that in between the main feeder and this power. And then, in theory, yeah, that activates when it detects uh, someone covering it. So it's motion activated. These will light up when someone walks past. Um, now, this is showing you why I sort of went for the one power cable into three, as opposed to each one having an individual, because otherwise I would have needed to buy three of these, whereas this way I only need one. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is the control unit. So I can put a control unit here. So we can do remote on and off. Or the other thing we can do is we can do flashing. Which is pretty fucking cool, right? Anyway, that's it from me. Um, I'm going to be posting a bit of colouring content just as we approach the 31st. Uh, so stay tuned if you're into that. Um, this kind of thing, um, I mean, it's not a lot of money to sort of put these things together. I mean, we're talking about a couple of dollars for each component. Um, and this isn't something that's really complicated. I taught myself how to do all of this stuff just, you know, over the past couple of years of messing around with LEDs. So, um, you know, if, you, if it, this is something that you find exciting, have a go. And uh, you can make some pretty cool stuff. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.